Welcome back to our series on how to build a copper still, also sometimes called a moonshine still. Our distillation equipment is capable of distilling water, essential oils, fuel alcohol, and yes, even spirits such as vodka, gin, bourbon, whiskey, moonshine, and more. However, the distillation of alcohol requires permits, so make sure you have those if you're going to do that. So in this video, we are going to solder together the vapor cone, we're going to solder the cap skirt, uh, and cap plate. Uh, we're going to also attach the vapor cone to the boiler. So beginning with the vapor cone here, I'm actually going to um, bend it in such a way that the parts that lap over one another are flat. So it's not going to be a sy symmetrical cone at this point. Um, the parts should lap over flat and that's going to help, uh, just going to help, it's going to make it easier to solder the um, vapor cone together. So the first thing you're going to want to do here, of course, is to apply some water soluble flux to the seam. Um, also would have been a good idea to apply a flux in between the laps as you riveted the part together. Once you get the flux applied, you're going to start soldering. So what you do here, again, is you apply just enough heat to get that solder to melt, and as soon as the solder starts to flow, you pull the torch away until the solder no longer flows. Then you can add more heat. So I just made my way up the seam. Um, I'm gonna hit the rivets here. Do a little bit more there on the very end, and I am done. All right, always a good idea to clean your parts as you go. So I'm just gonna remove some excess on there. Um, I'm gonna hit the inside of this seam with a wire brush and that's what it's gonna look like once you're done, ideally. Uh, I'll clean up the outside a little bit. Um, adding flux to the copper also is um, an easy way to clean the parts as you move along. The flux is acid-based, so it removes the tarnish and the, the corrosion and the soot that ends up building up on your um, parts um, pretty effectively so that's a that's an easy way to clean the parts as you move along as well now I can sort of bend this thing back to its proper shape which I will need to do before we move on to the next step which you will need to do so um, just shape this by hand you're eyeballing it getting as round as possible now is the time you want to get this thing as perfectly round as you possibly can, just bending it with your hands. Because we're about to solder the vapor cone to the boiler. So once these parts are as round as they can possibly be, you'll flip the vapor cone upside down with the seam facing away from you. The vapor cone seam facing away from you. The boiler seam you'll flip upside down with the seam facing towards you. You want these seams on the opposite side of the still. It's going to make soldering it all together much easier. So you're going to flip it upside down. The first thing you're going to look for is even spacing around the edge of the boiler between the boiler and the edge of the outside edge of the vapor cone. You'll also just eyeball it to make sure it's straight up and down, perfectly vertical. Then next, Place a weight on top of the boiler to kind of smash that down into the vapor cone. I'm using an anvil here. I think it's about 15 pounds, 20 pounds. And that's going to push those parts together and um, it will eliminate the gaps in between the two parts and it's going to make soldering much, much easier. All right, I'm just going to take a final look here, make sure it all looks good. And then I'll apply some flux in three places. I'm going to just tack this thing together initially. I'm not going to apply flux the entire thing. I'm just going to apply flux in a few places. I'll tack it together. And then once it's together, I'll start filling in the gaps. Okay, so you want to apply heat evenly to both the vapor cone and the boiler wall. They both have to be warm for the solder to melt into that that seam there. If only one of the parts is warm enough, you'll see the solder melt, but it won't stick to the part below or above if it's not warm enough. Just like everything else, apply only enough heat to get that solder to flow and as soon as it starts flowing, pull your solder, uh, pull your uh, torch away. This is one of those um, seams that's easy to accidentally heat the solder and melt it off of the end of the stick. Try to keep the solder out of the way 
So you're only heating the copper parts. All right, so I have this thing tacked together. I have the still boiler and the still vapor cone tacked together. I'm gonna add some more flux and start filling in the gaps. You'll see that you can see the seam of the vapor cone there. I'm actually not, I'm gonna solder near there, but I'm gonna to try to stay well far enough away from that as to not heat that up and melt any of that solder that's already in that seam that I've soldered together. So heating, letting the solder start to flow, removing the torch, and then moving on. I'll add some more flux. And you can see a little bit of the gap right there between the boiler and the vapor cone. You know, small gaps are fine actually. The solder flows right in there and generally is not a problem. Um, it won't it won't drip through um, but again you want to you want to eliminate the gaps as much as possible which is why I put the weight on the top there so I'm just moving on around this um, letting the solder just flow into the gap there once you're done with the sides of the boiler you'll now solder the vapor cone and the boiler wall um, where the seat uh, at the locations of the seams of the vapor cone and the seam of the boiler wall. So the trick here is when you're soldering the seam of the boiler, apply the heat to the vapor cone. Don't heat the seam of the boiler. That has solder in it. You don't want that solder to flow out. Apply the heat to the vapor cone. On this side of the still, where the seam of the vapor cone is located, I'm going to apply heat predominantly to the boiler wall, not to the seam of the vapor cone because I don't want the solder to run out of the seam in the vapor cone. Sometimes you have to hit it with a little bit of heat um, to get it to flow. In those cases, I feel like it's best to apply the heat, like for here, for example, to the boiler wall, let the solder flow into place, and you might notice that it's not sticking to the vapor cone. Then you'll just hit the solder like directly on the seam there until it flows against the vapor cone. And we're done. That looks good. Next we're going to solder the cap skirt together. So again, this is another part where it's it's best that it's out of round, it's not perfectly round. The, that, that seam there is flat um, before you start to solder. So apply your water soluble flux. Uh, there are several ways to do this. I'm going to just balance this on uh, this anvil here. Another way to do it would actually be to just clip that part with some locking pliers and then put the locking pliers in a vise. Um, sometimes I'm, you know, I think I was just lazy here and didn't feel like getting my vise out. So I'm um, just balancing this here. It is possible to knock it over, which you see I did right there. It's just sort of balancing. So I'll reset it, um, apply some more heat, add some more solder. You want to make sure you solder the seam and the rivets there. And you can see I didn't even have to apply any heat. It was already hot enough. The solder flowed right over that rivet there. Moving on to the other side. The part's already pretty warm, so I didn't have to apply much heat at all. So I hit that seam, I hit that rivet, and the still cap skirt is done. I'm going to clean that up with a wire brush, uh, a little bit of flux. Not using the wire brush on the outside because I don't want to scratch it up. And clean it up really nice. All right, so now is the time to bend this thing and um, and make it round. This this is really important. Uh, this part needs to be like perfectly round. You're gonna have a very difficult time putting the cap plate in this thing, which you're about to do next, if you don't do a good job um, with bending this thing uh, and making it round. So I'm gonna show this whole thing to you in uh, just like a, a time-lapse style. That was real time. We're gonna move into the time-lapse here. And um, the parts that aren't round enough, I guess, I'm just like pushing them out every once in a while. I kind of push the parts that are too round back in. But you're just slowly working that with your hands. It takes some time. It takes some patience. Um, but once you're done, it should look something like that. Pretty round. All right, we're going to put the cap plate in next. What you need to know about this is that this part is actually tapered. It is not a, a, a cylinder. 
it's it's more of like a slightly tapered cone one side has a larger opening than the other side you're not going to be able to fit that cap plate into one of the sides this uh, historically has confused a lot of people um, it's not easy to tell visually that one side of this thing is larger than the other but i promise you one side is larger than the other one opening is larger than the other so um, one thing to watch out for is if you are kind of sloppy with your solder on this point here, you can have too much solder built in on, uh, built up on that seam, um, so much so that the cap is not going to fit in there. You might have to take a file and file that down. Um, I was pretty clean with my soldering here, so um, there's there's going to be no need to do that. I'll just end up popping my um, cap in here, and that looks something like this. You will take the cap. You keep it as flat as possible. You want one side there, one end just barely in. You kind of keep some pressure down on that with your thumb and the palm of your hand there. And you pop the other side in. And then you just kind of pull it out until it's flush and flat on top there. This one went in pretty easily. Um, Admittedly, I've, some of them, you know, they don't always go in this easy. Again, if you're sloppy with your soldering or you don't bend that thing so it's perfectly round. Um, one strategy is you could, uh, to make it easier, you could take a file and kind of taper the edge, lightly taper the edge of that cap plate so it fits in there. It's not necessary though. If you do a good enough job soldering and um, shaping that thing with your hands, um, you won't need to do that. So while I will apply some flux, and I'm going to do the same thing here I've done with the other parts, I'm just going to balance this on the end of this anvil here, and I will... Oh, one thing to note, yes, yeah, so I'm going to solder that seam. I'm going to solder the cap plate to the cap skirt at the seam last. I'll start, I'll start on the other side of the... Um, cap skirt assembly here first um, one thing I was going to mention is that you can again you know set this up in a vise there's enough friction on the cap skirt there that the plate will um, stay in place unless you file the edges down or something like that um, but anyway um, I'm going to just balance this again here the thing to note about this part is that the cap plate is much thicker than the cap skirt so you're going to concentrate all of the heat on that plate the residual heat from you heating that plate will heat up the cap skirt okay you don't want to apply any heat to the cap skirt when soldering this part um, because it's it you'll overheat it so all of the heat um, is applied underneath the part so we did the back side one side we're going to do the third side here. We'll just apply heat until it's warm enough for the solder to flow, and then we'll remove the torch. And then the last thing we'll do is the seam at the front. I've turned the torch down here. If you notice that, I turned the torch, the heat down is pretty much as low as I can get it on this thing. Um, I'm gonna very. I'm gonna apply some precision heat back as far away from that seam as I can to avoid heating it up. I don't want the solder to melt out of the cap skirt seam, and I'll just melt that solder into place. This is what it should look like when you're done. You have a nice little. Um, be the solder that runs all the way around the inside of that part, completely sealing the cap plate to the cap skirt. And I will go ahead and just apply some flux. It's hard to get the wire brush in there, so I'll apply some flux in here, um, clean out the, the tarnishing, and I'll do the same to the top, keep those parts nice and clean, and move on. All right, thanks for watching this video. Check out the rest of the videos in this series if you haven't done so yet. And make sure to watch part seven where we will solder in the collar and we will assemble the column and condenser.